Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Toxic Relationship Rehab with me, Pink Girl Teachers. Some of you know me as Joy. Um, I want to thank you for joining me and continuing to come back. If you are new to the channel, if you find that you like this video, hit subscribe and turn on the notification button so that you don't miss any new videos that I will be uploading. And if you are somebody who has been visiting this channel for some time and have already subscribed, thank you. And if you find that this is relevant to you or you were able to gain something from it, hit the like button and share it with somebody and as well as leave comments. I'll be sure to jump in the comments and have a chat with you. I am also the host of the Project Real Love podcast, which is available on all podcast platforms. It is a dating and relationship podcast. I am a certified life and relationship coach. So today I wanted to talk to you about how the narcissist reacts when you leave. So one thing that can happen is that, you know, they may go into a panic and be like, what just happened here? Because um, you discarded them. And so that's a shock, especially if they didn't see it coming. Sometimes they know and they think that, you know what, she's so weak or he is so hooked onto me that they'll never go anywhere. And so sometimes it really is a shock to them because they see, they see us really as weak people. They think that because they've been able to manipulate and control us, that we're just going to just be their victims forever. But that's where they get this game twisted. We have the power here because guess what? At any point in time, we can issue a plot twist and they don't know how to handle that. So one thing that you'll find that they do is they start issuing these fake apologies, very insincere, and they'll have fake promises and a whole bunch of crocodile tears. Listen, they will be promising you that they will do better, they will be better, but I want you to remember that nothing that they are saying in this moment is genuine at all. In order for somebody to do better, in order for somebody to treat you better, there has to be a certain level of self-respect within themselves. Now we know that the narcissist, they don't know how to self-reflect and that's why they project their feelings onto us. So they're not going to at any point be sincere or genuine with you. This is just talk to get you back. And I encourage you not to go back because going back would be, it would be, it would be lethal. Like, listen, the abuse that they would give you or the way that they would come back at you is to punish you because first of all, who do you think you are? Who told you that you can get away from me? I'm your master. Like, yeah, I said master, like, listen, so <laughs> this crazy narcissist that I used to deal with, and mind you, I didn't know at the time, but when, when things were over and he knew like, oh, she's gone, gone for real, for real, because like, listen, I saw what I saw and I was like, that's it. I'm out. And I meant it. And he started, <laughs> he started like um, sending me messages or emailing me and he'll say, this is your master. And this is from a fake account. And I'm like, my master. Then I was just like, oh, only one psychopath could do that. And, you know, so they'll do stuff like that, you know, and um, so if you do go back, they will try to punish you for leaving them. And that's, a, you know, that's further manipulation. It's also to, to demonstrate their power and control over you. So don't do that to yourself. Once you get gone, stay gone. Don't allow them any access to you. Um, another thing that, you know, another thing that, that the narcissist could do is tell you that they wanted to end things with you anyway. So they will try to flip the switch because that's their weak attempt to uh, regain some type of power or control over you. They will, you know, manufacture a situation or manufacture some type of drama because that's what they do. Or they'll go, you know, they'll go back to a certain point in time and they'll, they'll say something like, oh, I should have left you win, you know, but guess what? The truth of the matter is they didn't leave you win. They stayed because they weren't ready. Sometimes, you know, with a narcissist, they have to have their new source of supply lined up. And in that, you know, already they've invested time in that love bombing stage to know that they're secure with this person. And they have to also be sure that this person is going to be able to meet and exceed the level of supply or the, you know, the type of source or the fuel that you were, they were getting from you. 
So, you know, this is not always easy. Like it's not always easy. And that's why they tend to have several partners and that's where it can become a, you know, a challenge with juggling them. Like the person that I will, one of the people, I've had two relationships that I know were with narcissists. The first one was covert. So I didn't pick up on it until I actually studied narcissism and knew what it was about. So that, you know, it was like, oh, I had an aha moment, like, oh, okay. And that one was to this day notorious with the with the false promises and the crocodile tears, like they don't phase me. And because I know what I know, he says that I'm very cold hearted, but like, oh, please, who has time to play with these games with you? is not me. So you can take it back where you came from and I am being, and that's all there is to it. Um, so no, you know, and they'll, they'll do this, you know, they'll tell you that they were going to end it anyway, just so they can pull the rug under you and try to put some insecurities in your head. But you got to remember this, you ended it first. You had the courage to speak up or move on or whatever, however it happened. It doesn't really matter. But what matters is that you had the courage to see that something's wrong I deserve more and I'm worth more and you bounce. And that's all that there is to it. So they can come and they can say whatever they want, but you got to limit your contact with them. You got to limit the amount of time you're communicating with them. If you have children with a narcissist, this is, you know, um, you're going to have to be smart with what you do. You're going to have to gray rock them or gray wall them, gray rock them. And if you think about a gray rock, it's just dull. There's nothing there. And that's how you are supposed to be with a narcissist. You are not supposed to be engaging. You are to mind your business and drink your water. That's all. And when they ask you questions, just answer about the children. That's it. Let your children know if, you know, depending on how things were. My kids know that, like, listen, what happens here stays here. And that's that. Um, but mine are also older. I have a 13-year-old and a 16-year-old. So they kind of know, you know they will have been around so they know you know and so they're not going to be feeding any information about our family and our life but just answer the questions that are going on don't speak about what's happening in your life oh i got a new business contract oh i have a new boot no none of that is any of their business and what they will do is brag about what they're doing and nine out of ten they're lying anyway so you know be mysterious about it. Let them guess, you know, because in the back of their mind, they are going to be going crazy trying to figure out what exactly you have going on. And, you know, it's easy sometimes to just feel like, you know what, oh, you're just doing all this talk about what you're doing. And I'll, let me, sh let me tell you what I'm doing. No, I remember. <laughs> so this ex narc right? He called he called me and I broke no contact because I was like, what's this about? You know, and I was still at the point where I wanted closure. So I broke no contact and I knew then that it was a mistake and I never, you know, and I went back no contact and I kept it no contact. So anyhow, he calls me and he was like, oh yeah, you know what? I have a new podcast and I'm, I'm, I'm recording with this this beautiful woman man she's so fine her body this and that and I was like oh and he was trying to tell me how he had all these views on his podcast and I was thinking mm, okay and I mean that conversation was like wow it was so insightful because the lies the lies the lies the lies like listen this man had traveled the whole world in a space of like two three months he had been everywhere every continent done everything been shopping, been eating at the finest restaurants, please. No, I ain't your fool. And you know what? It's okay. If you want to lie, that's fine. But you're not going to do it to me. You can continue to lie to the new sources of supply or the old other ones or the other old ones who will fall for that. But like, guys, you deserve more and you're worth more, and you can get more, so don't even, you know, and then another thing that they'll do is they'll stalk or harass you, and um, this is simply because they don't want to lose control over you, or they don't want to lose you as a source of supply. Remember, I always say this, the, the main things that the narcissist wants for, from you, what narcissistic fuel really is, is the four A's, attention, admiration, affection, 
and adoration. That's what they want. Of course, everything else is a fringe benefit. And sometimes, you know, some people are able to give it better than others. And so it just depends how they feel and how, what they think about you. So, you know, don't, don't even just, you know, if they, if they are harassing you to the point where you are actually fearful, then it's time to get the authorities involved. You know, stalking is a, is a, is a criminal offense. So you may, you know, you, you may have a case, you know, you can get a restraining order and that kind of thing, but protect yourself. You know, you may have to cut off mutual friends if you need to, or just let them know like, Hey, this is what's going on between us. And I don't want you to share any, anything that I'm doing with them or, you know, anything about my life. When I left this last one, I moved. I moved and I made the decision to change my phone number, which was so difficult. But like, I got so sick and tired of constantly getting phone calls from these different text app numbers, like all hours of the day and night, like it, it was ridiculous. And it was very hard for me to let go of that number because it had been tied to my business for years. And, you know, it was difficult because I did, I was not able to communicate that to all my clients and potential clients that I've been working with. And so I did lose some business, but at the end of the day, guess what I gained? Peace of mind. My phone does not ring unnecessarily because my number is not out there. Like, you know, my email address, yes, but you can filter that. And it's, you know, it is what it is. You have to, I have the choice whether to just ignore it or whatever. But with the phone calls, it was just a lot. And so I changed my phone number and you may have to do the same thing. But what happens is, um, you know, the, how the narcissist may react if you leave is they will seek out to, they'll go out to punish you. Now, of course, they want to punish you because, again, this is an attempt to exert their power and control over you. Like I said earlier, they will feel like, who the hell do you think you are to move on? Who gave you the permission to leave me? Oh, so you, you're tripping. You think that you can live this life without me? You need me. Uh-uh. That's not how this works. Excuse me. They need you. You don't need them. They need you. What did, what did they ever bring you that was valuable? Did you have peace of mind with them? Like, listen, I used to get migraines, migraines. And the moment I went my separate way, the moment I separated myself from that foolishness and the illusion of a relationship, guess what? Guess who didn't have any more migraines? Me, gone. No. So, you know, no, no, you don't need that. So, you know, they may try to turn people against you. And this would be by doing, you know, by having a smear campaign, dragging your name through the dirt. And, you know, sometimes even like I know of some people who, who had their, naked pictures or those sexy videos that they had made put up on Facebook. Like I was like, whoa, you know, but they will go to all kinds of extremes to embarrass you and to humiliate you and to make people, to try to control how people see you. And the painful thing is that some people will actually side with a narcissist when they should know you better. And you know, it, it will hurt. But at the end of the day, it's showing you something about them. And it's not that that relationship needs to be severed forever. It just means that it may just need to be on hold. It's not even that it may, it needs to be on hold until you have the uh, ability to, you know, review later on. Some, you know, right away that this is like, this is a done deal. We can't be friends. It's over. But others, you know, they just may need to be on pause for a moment. You have those who will cut off finances. And this is also as another way to control you. You know, sometimes they'll, they stop paying on houses. They stop. They don't take care of their children. You know, financial obligations that they had. And so this is where if you have to, and if you are able to, get a court order, have something put in place that would help you because, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. And you, you know, you do have options. And so that's really all I had to come and say here today. I just wanted to share those tactics. You know, the first one was that they will give you false promises. And I talked about, you know, them trying to pull the rug from under your feet by telling you that they were going to end the relationship anyway. Oh, well, guess who beat them to it? 
you did. Another thing is they'll stalk and harass you. And then the other thing is that they will try to punish you. But listen, guys, I say this all the time that you are stronger than you think. And you have more, you have the upper hand. You know, you have the upper hand when it comes to this because really at the end of the day, you gotta remember this. The narcissist chose you for a reason. Yes, maybe the boundaries were weak. Yes, maybe there's a self-love deficit. Yes, maybe, you know, they just saw you as an easy prey, but there was something more about you. There's something that they see in you or that they saw in you that, you know, they want that they value and it's kind of crazy because you know as twisted as they are you've got to remember that these guys hate themselves they hate themselves they they became who they are because they lack the ability or that's just how they decided they were going to cope with whatever they experienced early on in life and they lack that ability to self-reflect so they can't change and you know why would they change when they've mastered manipulating why would they change when they when they can get what they want by being you know the jackasses who they are you know it's just easier sometimes to just stay because change can be difficult let's let's tell the truth change can be difficult even you listening who wants to get away or who are, who is trying to break negative patterns in your own life you recognize that you know it can be difficult but guess what it's not impossible you don't have to you know you don't have to put up with this foolishness you don't deserve it you are worth so much more so i just want to encourage you like listen when you go when you finally do break away from them congratulations i'm very proud of you and i'm rooting you on i'm praying for you and i wish you the best you know and if you need help if you just need to vent then email me my email is in the as in the comments below and we can work this thing out we can talk about it and i can help you figure things out your next step and all that all that good stuff but like listen stay focused when you go no contact don't be like and break your no contact because it was funny and it is funny now like listen how are you gonna travel the whole world in three months like dude i i know you i know you no but <laughs> Can you imagine, like, of all the lies that you could tell, oh, you have a number one rated podcast? How? We were talking, like, we were still together two months ago, three months ago, whatever it was. Since when do you have a top rated podcast? Like, stop. Stop. That was pathetic. And who cares? I don't care. And I don't care about your co-hosts if you are watching this. I don't care. Like, you know, and that's all it is to it. At the end of the day, they will try to be you that's because they don't know how to be themselves. But again, I want to thank you for joining me on this episode of Toxic Relationship Rehab with Pink Girl Teaches. Again, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you found this helpful, and then turn on the notifications. It's been my pleasure being here with you, and I, like always, take care of yourself and take care of each other. Goodbye.